Hi everyone, and welcome to this video on DM tips for the Shadow Dark adventure that's included in the DM or the GM Quick Start Guide, The Lost Citadel of the Scarlet Minotaur. So this is available for free. You can get it. You can start trying out Shadow Dark right away. So I put this map into Photoshop. I did some tweaking on it because it's not real well lined up with the grid, and I kind of just stretched it out to line it up as I needed to, warped it where I needed to, and got it into the game here. I don't normally use um, dynamic lighting, but in this instance, I thought it might be pretty neat to try it out, and it sure was fun. Now, if this is the first time you're doing Shadow Dark, and I've only ever done it once myself, you have to remember if you've done old D&D &D stuff, all the stuff about reaction checks and morale and such. So I put that, just some quick copy of the instructions here for my reference in the game. Try to remember not to forget that because it's hugely important because characters are going to try to avoid fights and you should be fair in when monsters run. They should, all monsters should not fight to the death and nor should all monsters necessarily be hostile. Then difficulty classes here for my reference because all checks are basically ability checks. There's no skills, no proficiency bonus to add to those those ability checks, so these are the numbers you're looking for for different difficulty classes. Okay, so this adventure, uh, like I said, it's in the gym guide, it's for free, and it's set in a scrubland, an arid scrubland, where there is a maze, and the party might have some rumors, so you definitely want to share the rumors at a time or when you start the adventure. There's four ways in, and I just put my party in front of the one way in, the uh, the main doors. Uh, they didn't ask to reconnoiter, but if they do, if your party does ask to reconnoiter, they should be able to find the other ways in. You have the the open opening into the maze over here. You have a shattered door right up here that leads into these stairs. And then, of course, they could also come to the courtyard from above the maze, and that's open to the outside there. You have Beastmen and Edder Caps and the Scarlet Minotaur that are populating this place along with various other monsters. The Edder Caps are here in the southeast, and there's a nice table of Edder Cap names you can use. The Beastmen are in some secret rooms to the northwest, and there's a table of Beastmen names you can use. And then the Minotaur is most often found in the central courtyard, but is also found wandering the dungeon. So with wandering the dungeon, the party basically, every time they've traveled, if they're going carefully and searching as they go, about every 60 feet, you would check for a wandering monster with a 1 in 6 chance. And if they're going um, speedily, it'd be about every 120 feet. Now, I just did that every single round instead of uh, every other round and made it 1 in 12 to give me the same odds for that happening. So I didn't have to remember what round it was. When you do get an encounter, every subsequent encounter, you should dial down the random roll. Oh, and here's the random table here. Random encounters and subtract two from the roll so that the party will run into the Scarlet Minotaur. And if you want to prolong the adventure and not have that be such a dangerous encounter, you could maybe not have that minus two, but I think it's nice to have that, that pressure on the party to get in, get out, find what they can find, and get back out of there. Here's the rumor table for reference that I copied out of the adventure. Okay, so those are the denizens of the adventure, and you got your wandering encounters, and... You head on in. So the first chamber here, the mural, cham mural chamber, it has an edder cap in it. It's got some treasure hidden if the party searches. The edder cap's hidden up in the northeast corner and will at first try to be friendly so as not to be attacked and killed by the party. And uh, if it's attacked, it will run for help with the other edder caps. It'll take you to room two. So turn on the light here. So I got these red columns and the jewel-colored murals on the north wall. Room two, when the party comes into room two, it's got this dazzling reflection all around, and you can reference that or replicate that by doing some light sources that are invisible to the players and just throw them in there. Make it just super bright as long as they bring a light source in. So drag those out of the way there. There are five bodies encased in webbing that the party could run into. Uh, there could be an ambush if the editor cap in area one fled this direction. And these editor caps are really difficult uh, for a level one party. Once the party gets to level two, maybe they'll have a better chance, but really difficult. Then you come to the next room here where you have a secret door covered in webs. 
There's also a scroll on the wall. So the party burns the webs, they'll burn up the scroll, unfortunately. Um, and then if you get through the secret door, you'll come to room four over here where there's a whole bunch of header caps with the piles of treasure that they're trying to split between them. They will flee if things go against them, but chances are things won't go against them if the party's first level, the party should be the ones fleeing. Then you come to area five here, and this room is uh, the roving chamber. There's a skeleton that's uh, pinned on the wall, and his hands are clasping a spear. He's got a key on him if the party searches, or actually one of the robes has a key. Yeah. And that key will come into place on the other side of the dungeon in room, what is it, room 20. Okay, then you got some wandering tunnels here. You got a secret door there. Party's not likely to find secret doors unless they're searching carefully along the walls, in which, you know, if they divide the labor up, one person should be doing that, then they might spot the beastmen there. Assuming they don't, they continue to area six. In this area, you have the bathhouse, and it's got a snake-haired woman statue at the bottom here. It's got these stone basins along the sides. And there's a one in six chance removing a plug will bring in a scarab swarm, which would be really bad for a low level party. That's area six. Area seven is the first of the rampaging bulls. So to the left is a bull statue, 10 feet tall, made out of bronze. All the way to the far end of the hall, which the party might not be able to see depending on their light source, they should be able to see some deep gouges in the wall. On the bull statue, they should be able to see a emerald embedded in its forehead and shattering it will stop the statue. They might not know that. This is pretty much a death trap for a first level party if they come in here and trip it. So I'd have the tripping happen with only like one of them step into the room. A uh, three and six chance it animates and it's a DC 15 dex check or 2d6 damage. Then that's area seven. You come to area eight and this is the blood bowls. If you fill a bowl with fresh blood, it will heal D4 hit points once you use the bowl's crumble. Area 9 is quite a room. It's got these multicolored pillars. There's four pairs of them painted rich jewel tones, Captain Black and Marble. There's a body of an Edercap lying face down. It says halfway across the room. I didn't know if that meant halfway across left to right or halfway across north to south, but I put it left to right, and that Maybe it's easier than if the party had to get down to here to see the Edercap body, because the Edercap body has clues to what the party might encounter should they go past these pillars. At the far end of the room, they can see a uh, blade sunken into a black and marble altar. And of course, with the rumors, they know there's three magical weapons here that they're looking for, so that's probably one of them. And good chance they will go after it. All right, then we come to... They would have gone p past this on the way, another bull. Uh, run here. This bull has a skeleton on its horns covering its emerald, so it's hard to stop. Uh, the party could trip it and jump out of the way. Now, that's another question is, if the party trips it all the way down the hall, it seems like the dex check should be easier versus if they trip it right away. Or there should be an initiative roll to see if they can get out before the bull comes charging down. It doesn't say how fast the bulls charge, so use your judgment there. If they come this way, they could come to the back entrance into the place. And then that's area 10, area 11. I situate down here. The door is barred or through the handle are multiple spears. There are skeletons in that room. And the party can see um, four skeletons. They can see the red eyes if they look through a hole in the door, the keyhole in the door. Then you have an armory over here, and one of the rumors is don't touch the bodies in the place. Well, there is a 1 in 12 chance, cumulative, that a white rises up if anyone touches any of the skeletons that are in this room. And the beastmen, if they hear loud fighting there, they will be less inclined. They'll be one step toward hostile in any reaction they have. The beastmen are very quiet, very scared, and noise is paramount to uh, be kept to a minimum for them. Another bull trap here. Uh, this one's got some gold scattered, scattered at the bull's feet, so you're going to get an emerald and gold. Should that be two different um, plus one experiences? Good question. I don't know exactly. Use your judgment on how fast you want your party to go up in level. We got the secret area, area 14, that goes all the way from left side over here, all the way to the right, left side to right side. 
There's actually multiple rooms, and there's a couple beastmen only in there. There's actually three of them in there. Then we come to area 15. This would be if the party came to the front entrance and then went the other direction. And when they come to this room, there's multiple jars. They can uh, hear the occasional faint squeak and hiss. And they can also see some white jagged lines on the door to the south here. This, if they happen to find it first, will kind of clue them into what these bull traps do. Because this hallway is actually a triggered bull trap. Then you have some offering jars here. And you have a commoner who made his way this far trying to steal some treasure. And I had him wait around and take the treasure that the party left behind when, uh, <laughs> when the party left the room with him. Then, let's see, that's 16. Area 17 was the bull. Area 18 is the big central, central area. So in this area, I've got daylight um, shining in the room. So when the party comes in here, even if they don't have light sources, they'll be able to see. This token I'm moving around, by the way, has vision and generates light. That's why you can see everything. And... The Minotaur may or may not be in here. There's a lot of treasure to be gained here. I mean, you could say there's, uh, of course, the Minotaur's axe, if they get that off the Minotaur. If they get the plus one strength bonus, I'd count that as at least a plus one treasure, if not a plus three, I mean, experience. And then each round they spend sifting remains, they can find four things. So that should be either one or four or three XP for that. Then area 19 is a beast man who's knocked himself out and area 20 is a tiled floor with an ochre jelly in it and what i did here is i took this and i drew a pattern but then i covered the pattern with an orange here and maybe the party might notice that there's some yellow peeking out and be suspicious and prod the floor otherwise i don't know how often they'll be prodding the floor as they're just starting so there's also light coming from the door there, so I put some light on that doorway. And the key from Area 5 opens this door, and if you don't use the key, you can uh, trigger a pretty horrendous trap. Then this room here has a skeleton with a spear through him. Um, some nice treasure there. I'd say the spear would be a 3 on the XP scale. And then you have the labyrinth. And when you play this with Theater of the Mind, not Theater of the Mind, but um, with tokens and map, and if they get into combat, this was actually pretty fun. I mean, normally mazes aren't that, aren't that fun because, you know, everyone knows what they're doing. And they can see the whole map. And this one, though, it was a lot of fun. Now here, I put in some light coming from outside. So if I turn the light off on this token here, you can see what I did. Lighting, bright light, off, save. Okay. So it can see some light at the end of the hallway there. Uh, the gray area would be black to a player if I do control L. This is what a player would see. So look, there's some light at the end of the hall. So what's that from? They'd come down here, they say, oh, even brighter light. And then boom, there's the outside. So that's how dynamic lighting works there. And I did similar things to all the other areas too. Let's see dynamic lighting in here. It looks like this. So you have, you know, of course, the columns blocking your line of sight, but then you got the sunlight and it's also casting some shadows off of the columns. So that's how I did that. All right, that was area 1921, 22 is the maze, 23 is the beastman. So here's the party's maybe only chance to actually defeat the Minotaur, and that is if they use these beastmen to do it. The the headman of the beastman is Rogoth, and he will actually send his uh, hated brother, Rel, and his non-minions into danger to help him defeat the Scarlet Minotaur. So that's the party's maybe one chance to be, defeat that Minotaur. Area 24, you got some more beastmen. Area 25, pretty dangerous room. If any of the weapons or armor is touched, three animated suits of armor, um come after the party and animate suit armor. Let me go to the keeper layer here. So these things attack with a long sword and they are plus three to hit. They just do D8 damage, but there's three of them. So that's going to do some damage to the party. And um, they have armor class 15 and 11 hit points. So they won't go down easy. 
Then you got area 26, where you have the three kings, and there's some good treasure there, but also a dangerous trap. And finally, the sacrificial cave. When I ran this, I, I missed a really cool opportunity. So in this chamber, if the party comes in here, um, and if for some reason the lights go out, then spirits will descend upon them and attack them. And the party can see these spirits, dozens of smoky human-like shadows flickering at the edge of their vision. Um, and the party's lights did go out in this room, and I forgot about that. So keep that in mind. Maybe put a note on the map. I like to put notes on the maps to make sure I don't forget things. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go to the GM layer and just type in a text and lights out danger. There we go. There we go. Now, only I will see that. And it'll hopefully not forget next time if the party uh, loses their light source when they're in this room. Now, ways they can lose light source if time runs out. Uh, or if they run into the um, dark mantles. These things are vicious. So here's the wandering monsters, and here's the dark mantle. I took the artwork from something that Kelsey shared. There's the artwork for the dark mantle. And these things, they can just put out light. So if the party's got light going, they can use darkness within 30 feet to extinguish all light, uh, even magical light, half the time. And that's it. So. It's a whole different way of playing than what you're used to, or I'm used to if I, from doing 5e for so long, in that there's no, like, marched forward uh, plot that the party's just on along for a ride. The party makes the plot, and I think that makes it really fun. The gameplay is emergent, and the dangers are real, and characters will likely die, uh, but character creation goes so fast, it's macros for that. So there's a stat roll, you choose your race, choose your class, and then there's the rest of the roles, and you're done. You pick some gear, and you're done. And when you level, you know, you get a talent. Ooh, double six is nice. And you roll your hit points, and that's it. So there it is. There is the Lost Citadel, the Scarlet Minotaur. I've run one session of it so far. had a good time. Going to run the second session here real soon, and I'll post that. Thanks for watching the video. Please come back and watch more, and have a good day, everyone.